Who doesn't want more love? And on top of that, who doesn't want just a little bit more respect? You know, not only are those things important, but, you know, when in the context of marriage, they're vital. The Bible says they are vital. You know, when my wife and I started dating, man, we turned it up to level 10 when it comes to love and respect. I mean, maybe even level 11. For those of you who are movie junkies, turn it up to 11. I'm telling you right now, we were so respectful, so loving. I would, I'm serious. I was that guy who would be like, I'll take off my jacket and throw it on the puddle. I'm opening doors left and right to where she's like, take it easy, take it easy. No, but for real, we were so, so in love and showed so much respect to each other. And it just came natural, right? Then one day we got married. And while the love and respect was there, it got a little bit weaker. We weren't trying as much, sprinkling some kids, four of them to be exact. And it just kind of goes away. You have to try a lot harder. And sometimes we just didn't have the energy and the patience to do that. And so, you know, it was really, really important that we tried to figure out how to make that work. But again, it takes effort and it takes time in the word and it takes time in prayer and a relationship with God in order to get back to that foundation. You know, don't get me wrong. Our marriage is good right now, but it had and has weak moments because we don't prioritize these things. And so, you know, before you say, who is this guy who's going to tell me I need to love my wife more and I need to respect my husband more? Just understand, it's biblical. You know, God has, has um, laid the foundation. Jesus has laid the foundation. The Holy Spirit, they have laid the foundation for us with the word in order to get to this place. You know, Paul, as he's in prison, you know, writing this portion in Ephesians chapter five, you know, it's rooted in Christian understanding of the gospel. We need to understand these things. You know, in Ephesians 5, 21 through 33, it says, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your husbands as you do to the Lord. For husband, for the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. His body of which he is the savior, now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. All right. Now, guys, don't be like me and tell your wives, listen, this is so important. Don't be like me and tell your wives, hey, read this scripture when you're having a rough day. Don't, do not do this. This is bad. I'm telling you, it is bad. You know, and, and, you know, it's just the wrong way to do this. And ladies, don't think that we're just going to stop here and I'm going to stop reading from scripture at this point because I'm going to turn it around on the dudes right now, too. Continues on, husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as radiant, as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless in this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Guys, what would it look like to take initiative here? Just think about it. What would that look like? Instead of waiting, guys, for the respect that we think we deserve in that moment, when we don't even deserve it, when our head's not even in the right place, what would it look like to take initiative and just love your wife? Love your wife. It continues on. After all, people have never hated their own bodies, but they feed and care for them, just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united with, to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. Last part, listen up. Pull your ears out, listen up. This is very important. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband. 
man, that passage, it convicts me. I hope it convicts you, but it convicts me to my core, you know, because I know I can do better. I'd be lying to myself if I thought I've, I'd figured out how to love my wife all the way, the way that God would want us to love our wives, the way the word talks about loving our wives. But don't beat yourself up. This is also important. Don't beat yourself up. You know, just as, you know, God loves us and gives us grace, we need to give grace to ourselves because all it takes is just taking initiative and trying. Accept the challenge, change it up. You know, going back to the start of the passage, that word submission, I know it's hard. It can trigger most of us. But the thing is, we have to figure out a way to understand what healthy submission looks like, especially if we want to have a healthy marriage. And I love, again, how that passage starts off so hot. Here we go. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And then wraps up with, however, each of you must also love his wife as he loves himself, and his wife must respect her husband. Super good. So convicting. So important. You know, a couple questions. How are you submitting to your spouse? How are you showing love? How are you showing respect? How are you spending time in prayer about this, about how to spend, uh, submit to your spouse or your future spouse? And what would our marriages look like if we did this, if we looked at submission as a strength, not a weakness? I think personally that our marriages would be a lot healthier and a lot stronger. We would live healthier, godly lives as we are one, like the Bible explains to us. So again, all right, now I'm good. All right, so here we go. A few questions. How are you submitting to your spouse? How are you trying to show love and respect to that person that you've committed to, that God has given you that gift that he has presented to you for the rest of your life? How are you spending time in prayer about this? Are you actually praying about how to do these things? Are you just saying, ah, this person doesn't do this and this person doesn't do this? How are you spending time in prayer about it? And what would our marriages look like if we actually did these things and we looked at submission to one another as a strength versus a weakness? Living in humility versus trying to be in control. You know, don't just take my word for it, guys. Take the word for it. God has put this in our hands so that we have a way to get to where we need to be and how to have a healthy, godly marriage. You know, my name is John Martinez, and thanks for listening to my short sermon. Bam! Well done. Mm. Appreciate you, bro. Dude! Hi, on. thank you so much for watching. If this material is helping you to further your authentic relationship with Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you to move from being someone who watches content to someone who participates and helps give towards this content. I want you to know that no amount is too small. Jesus Christ himself makes the biggest deal out of the smallest gift. And so whether that's $1 or $5 or $10, every dollar helps us in our mission to reaching the world with this vision of authenticity. So if God is prompting you, if the Holy Spirit is moving you towards generosity to Sandals Church, I wanna encourage you to go to donate.sc. And here's all we ask. Give whatever God asks you to give and we will just pray over that and ask God to bless that so that we can reach more people like you with this life-changing message.